Welcome to the final part of our trip to Radwood 2023, including a look at some of the entrants into the Hot Wheels Legends UK Tour Final. We're just going to jump straight in here and no show is complete without at least one of these. This is a really nice example of an MGB GT from before the big plastic bumpers ruined the look at the front and rear of the car. Moving along a little way, this Escort had a huge amount of attention all day and who can blame people for pouring over it? The Mexicist is or was a Mark II Ford Escort Mexico, but has since been modified somewhat. In fact, I think you'd be hard pressed to find an original part left on it. The 1.6 has been replaced with a Cosworth YB engine packed with WRC pistons and rods, a dry sump system, ball guana turbos, 1000cc injectors, a charge cooler and now has 600 horsepower running through a 6 speed sequential gearbox. Inside there's a full cage, a carbon dash and lots of 3D printed parts. That gets you a Mark II Escort Mexico that'll crack a 10 second quarter mile. Not too shabby. A lot of people slate the 924 for its van engine, but considering so many sporty cars have diesels these days, also found in vans, I'm not sure it's much of an argument against it anymore, but the body does pale in comparison to the nice wider arched 944 that was also available. And speaking of wide arches, the Quattro is another icon of the Radwood era, and its five cylinder is one of the best sounding engines around. There's one car I'd love to own, it's a short wheelbase Quattro, but that's a bit of a pipe dream. This one looks spectacular in white, with white wheels, and has almost a perfect number plate to match, even if the spacing is a little bit off. Although the GTV with the 8 valve was apparently a bit of a letdown, the 16 valve GTE was a massive success and loved by owners and uh, non-owners alike, but it didn't have the staying power or the following of some of the other hot hatches like the Golfs and the Escorts. Something about Mercs and tucking their wheels really seems to go together. This E-Class was even lower than the previous 320 in part 1, bagged to within an inch or perhaps a millimeter of its life here on the concourse. Of the 5,500 Sierra Cosworths made, only 500 of them were made into three doors, and only 40% of those were right-hand drive, so this is a fairly rare beast. Made not long before the RS500 was released with more power, but still sporting the original whale tail spoiler. It looks fantastic with all of the other cars on show outside the hangar. Inside the hangar, the Hot Wheels Legends Tour UK Final was taking place, and the cars vying to go through to the next round were pretty spectacular. This is a Jaguar Land Speed build, and it's got a V12, but not a Jaguar V12 like you'd find in any of their cars. The eagle-eyed among you will notice this is a double overhead cam V12, and they never made a double, only a single overhead cam V12. This is two 4.2 litre inline sixes formed into one unbelievable 8.73 litre quad cam V12 breeding through six SU carbs. The whole build is absolutely incredible, and as you can probably imagine, there is a huge amount of custom machining that's gone in to mate these two inline sixes together to form this V12. You can see lots more about the car on the Jaguar Enthusiasts channel on YouTube, and hopefully we'll see some more about it at another show. Unlike the MGB GT outside the hangar, this one's sporting a Jaguar AJ V6 under the bonnet, and much like our custom build, uses parts from all sorts of other vehicles to complete it. There are brakes from a Nissan S14, and a drive shaft from a Range Rover, to name just two of them, and some old jeans that we used to trim the seats inside. 
The side exit pipes look absolutely fantastic coming out the top of the wing, and this car's good for 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds, topping out at 148 miles an hour. So it's a little bit quicker than the MGs of old, and the overall look of it is absolutely spectacular. This Hillman Husky is a really nice example of fresh patina. Not too over the top and still believable without the actual rust ruining the car underneath. The whole thing was restored, repainted and has modern underpinnings including 300mm floating disc brakes, 6-pot calipers and an ST170 turbo 4-cylinder power plant replacing the original 1265cc engine. I bet this does slightly better than the 24 second 0 50 of the original Husky. When I looked at the Skoda Octavia, I got some really strong touring car vibes, even if it is a wagon. Maybe it's just the giant spoiler on the back and the huge five spokes up front under these razor thin archers for maximum tuck. Under the bonnet, there's a huge amount of work and it looks incredible in there, but there's no need to lift the bonnet to actually see inside as the skin has been delicately cut through around the framework to reveal the artwork underneath and all of the multicolor pipework that's been installed. I don't think any Allegro ever has had a more apt name than Rustin, but there's something not quite right about this, and that's because this isn't all Allegro. Sitting on a Beetle chassis, this rear-engine machine sits extremely low on some original 911 wheels and really looks the part. And going from Porsche wheels, we go to a Porsche engine here with this 3.2 litre flat 6 from a 911 living in the back of a Skoda 130 RS. Externally, some significant modifications to the body are fairly evident with some giant arches, but there's also a Lola chassis underneath and some Formula 2 suspension hidden up front to get this incredibly low to the ground. All in all, this thing weighs about 750 kilos and has somewhere north of 300 horsepower, and I bet it is an absolute boot to drive. Proof that almost anything can be turned into a gasser, this Ford Thames 300E originally had 37 horsepower from its 1172cc four-cylinder engine which was unceremoniously removed along with the three-speed manual gearbox and replaced with a 350 cubic inch small block Chevy. It puts down 13 second runs and was getting faster as of 2022. This Mazda might be the ultimate Japanese hybrid build. Part Mazda, part Honda and part Nissan. The engine is a K20A2 from a Civic Type R, and there's an entire S14 200SX rear end sitting at the back, all wrapped up inside a Mazda RX-7 FC shell. Lower, wider, and with plenty of aero, it is an extremely mean looking build, with even the headlights removed and lowered down into the bumper to give it a more streamlined look. As the crowd swelled and engulfed some of the cars so we couldn't actually get video of all of them, the hosts and panellists discussed each of them and announced the winner of the Hot Wheels Legends UK Final. Which car was going to get the chance to be made into a Hot Wheels 164th scale model? Gravelly Tones tell us the winner of this round of the UK Hot Wheels Legend Tour is... It's the MGB GT. Whoa! Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out shop.pedalbox.show and patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show to support the channel in a variety of different ways. And once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.